Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Approximately 11 a.m. in Honolulu, making it five o'clock in New York City. It is Friday, finally, the 21st day of the month, September 2012. And this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver, our weekend review. And oh, what a week we've had. Currently, we are trading higher in gold and off a few cents in silver. Direct prints, as you can see, approximately 1773. It's just below that. 1773, 1774 bid ask spread puts it up about $4.30 on the day. It's had a low of 1768.60 and a high of 88, 1788.80. And that, of course, is significant because that is a much higher high than the previous high, which broke a six and a half month stalemate. So we're at a new six, seven month high in gold. Silver, currently trading off about nine cents on the day. As you can see, 34.51 is the current print on the screen. Low 34.23 with a high of 35.32. I wanted to start out today's show by looking at the bigger picture or bigger view. And to do that, we're looking at the cash market chart of gold. It is in Henkin format. So it can give us some sort of a, a real clear indication of A, what kind of week we have had and B, how that week really fits into the, the big scheme or the big picture, so to speak. As you can see, when we take a look at this most current week, we had a nice upside move this week. There's no doubt about that. We're at seven month highs right now with that new high of 81. As you know, or 88, excuse me. As you know, what I'm really looking for at this point is I made a couple of assumptions through the week and it seems to have held for us. I'm looking at 1750 as our new level of support. I believe the intraday lows we had through the week were roughly around 1755, 1753 in that area. That seems to have held. I'm looking at major resistance at this point at 1803. And of course, 1803 is going to be matching the series of tops that we had. Let me draw this cross from 18 and try to line that up as straight as I can. And I typically, uh, make it a curved line, so there we go. And as you can see, these highs right up in here, I believe were 1802 or 1803. And I believe that as this market does ascend, and I believe that we're going to have higher prices, of course, at some point we will get a pullback, we'll have indications of that. But it's my belief that predominantly, as long as we're holding above 1750, we should inch higher throughout the next trading week to two weeks, I believe that there's a real solid opportunity that we'll see this market go to 18. At 1800, we'll have to see how it reacts. Typically at a century mark, it takes a couple of times for it to be able to break through that. However, when we take a look at how the market reacted recently as it barreled through 1700, let me just, uh, get my line in here, you can see that really we had this major breakout that occurred after the market traded above, call it uh, 1636, and that was the point that we pegged. We talked about this for my daily traders, know we've been talking about this all week, but really what we saw was this congestion area, when it popped out of this congestion area, it had built up so much energy, and that's the beauty of a compression triangle or a compression correction. It built up so much strength that literally you can see the size of these candles immediately enlarged. The lack of lower wicks immediately became present, and we were reminiscent of times we haven't seen in quite uh, so, some time, so to speak. If you look at it here, you don't get that kind of sustained rally. Why? Well, it's during this corrective period. But when we look at different areas, for example, you can see that typically what happens is you'll lose the lower tail, you get nice body size. Now, these body sizes, because it's a scalable chart, are a little bit smaller than when we actually saw them. But you can see you get these nice body sizes, you get the lack of uh, lower tails, and it's really on a weekly chart, not until you start seeing 
uh, a diminishing size, body size itself, do you start to look for that possible correction pivot point or turnaround point? I really think that right now when we compare the type of price activity, the type of price change that we have seen recently, we can certainly compare it to these other very, very strong rallies. And these strong rallies at this point down here, we're taking us to new high, new high after new high. Of course, this is when the market really took off and running. You can see that it stalls a little bit at uh, just above 1500, but once it breaks 1500, boom, it takes off like a rocket ship, takes off straight to a new high. It obviously got to this new high much too quickly. Why do I say that? Because after taking out 1900, making it to 1920, I believe intraday, we had a series of month after month after month in which it corrected and kind of found its proper place and proper price. And it really couldn't do that because you can see we have extreme highs and extreme lows that the market was hitting. Of course, as we got into this compression triangle, we talked about the fact that more than anything on these lows, we saw a base was forming. We saw the classic consolidation pattern, which is alternating candle color, small body with wicks on both side, up, upper and lower wicks. And we could clearly see the market beginning to break out as it went solid green. However, it went solid green at the same time that it went solid green. The body size was rather, rather small. There were still an abundance of these lower wicks. That all changed, of course, once it broke above 16 uh, 36 and we had a sizable breakout that to me is significant and I think as I said that we have room to the upside before we see the termination of an intermediate wave one realize we're in a major fifth right now this major fifth should be composed of one two three four and five now we're determining where does one end and based upon analysis of this weekly chart, I can tell you it appears on a tentative basis that we are firmly, firmly still enveloped in the intermediate first wave of five waves on the major fifth. Now, of course, it looks quite a bit different when we actually look at a short-term chart. This is 720 minutes, two candles per day. You can see that the market has been absolutely overbought, but as I talked about all week, in a sharply trending market, meaning, and in this case, a sharply trending upside move, you are really going to get periods of ascent, periods where it really takes off, periods of consolidation, consolidation will be a small sideways move or a very very small correction and then so forth now when we look at this chart 720 we can see that we have been most recently in what i like to call a rest stop a rest period in that the market's been consolidating at the same time you can see that we look at these series of highs right up in here, and you can see that we've gone ahead and made a new high here. This represents that high of 88. Steve Nissan likes to call this a scout, scouting party. It's simply a pattern that he's identified. It's not a candlestick pattern, but it's a pattern that he's identified as the, really, as the market is moving up, and you get these new highs, the bulls are testing the fortitude of the bears, seeing what kind of selling comes in. And as you can see, we've been unable to move above these series of highs here on a closing basis, because according to this theory, once the market begins to trade above this point, this will become support. He calls it a beachhead. In other words, they have, the Marines have landed, so to speak. You get the beachhead, and then the market will propel itself higher. My belief, as I said, first stop is 1800 per ounce. Now, similar activity in silver, although I have to be honest with you, I, I am actually concerned in silver that, that we have actually hit some resistance. We've also talked about this throughout the week, and this is that $35 point. Now, silver has been the more resilient in terms of the upside moves that we have seen. It's also been characterized by long periods of acceleration, followed by fairly long periods of consolidation. And what we're witnessing right now, of course, is really more of the same. We had this acceleration in which we saw the market go from just above 
$33 per ounce to really stall find resistance at 35 and this is our resistance point we have tried on two occasions to breach that and both occasions as of this point have been unsuccessful now is this market top heavy well in a typical market i would be looking for some sort of a pivot point or reversal point here however when i look at the way that we have really seen the market trade in other words these consolidations there here here when i look at this particular period it looks very very similar of course to that consolidating period so until we get more information in other words until we see a hard break down or a beachhead for meaning trades above here we don't really have conclusive evidence one way or the other if i had to guess my sense is that it is simply resting before going to higher ground but as i said that's a, that's a guess and i don't like to do that i like to base all of my assumptions on compelling technical evidence this has been gary wagner wishing you as always good trading we'll talk to you on monday for another daily update and review bye bye